Hi everyone, Holly and Maya here with my business partner, Anne-Marie Hoftailing. Good morning, Anne-Marie. Good morning, my friend. How are you? I am well, and yourself? Doing well. Um, Anne-Marie and I are the co-founders of Story Imprinting, a company that teaches great humans and great companies the art and science of storytelling. It is our mission to humanize business. Um, and with that, today we want to talk about this concept of authentic leadership, which is something that Anne-Marie, you just wrote a piece on LinkedIn about, am I right? I did indeed. So uh, go ahead. I think what is happening, particularly now, is I think that sort of these old modalities of leadership that were about this shiny packaged version of um, perfection and, you know, sort of we are the champions kind of rallying call is really being challenged to its core. Yeah. I think that people can see right through that. I think that the events over the past year super added to living in a digital world, frag yeah. frankly, where people can communicate their real experience with leadership um, and telegraph to the world what's actually going on. It doesn't fly anymore. I think that people really want to see the truth. And the, la the thing that gets you farthest away from the truth and communication is when things are manufactured and polished and have a tone that seems like a commercial rather than a human speaking. Yeah, like some sound bites as opposed to you yeah. know, something that's authentic. I think you're right. I mean, a point that you make a lot in trainings that we do on executive presence, and it's one that I think is so important is, you know, we're, we're in this entirely virtual digital world, right? And I think there's this, people forget that when you have a virtual meeting or when you're asking folks to be on camera, you're really inviting yourself into their home for, for what, you know, sort of like with all that that implies, right? And they could have a child that is special needs that is coming in and, and, and meeting their parent um, in the middle of a meeting, or, you know, there could be, you could be taking care of a sick or dying family member, right? And, and I know you've spoken very openly about your own experience with that. And I think, you know, in the before times, there was just this sense that we compartmentalized all of those pieces of ourselves, right? Yeah, I think there was, you know, I used to joke about this, but it was almost like there was shame around it. Like if yeah. you have family photos in your office, it's like, I mean, those are, those came with the frame. They're not my <laughs> children. And really, I don't know who I those people are. are. Job more than those people in this frame. And I think that what this period of time has done, you know, what I see it as is it's an invitation, but it's also a really positive move towards humanizing the workforce and really radically changing our expectations of people as professionals and seeing them as whole beings mm -hmm. rather than just this sort of, frankly, unsustainable um, avatar of perfection and polish that I do, don't think speaks to anyone anymore. And I think, frankly, younger generations are really challenging this. Yeah. And I think that um, for the most part, a lot of things around executive presence and leadership really were a model that didn't include anyone who looked right. like almost anybody except, <laughs> you know, somebody that se stepped out of central casting for Mad Men. Right. And all of that is really kind of falling apart, thank goodness, because we now have more dynamic, inclusive, thoughtful, human, honest versions of people engaging in leadership, which is what I think we need to create better organizations right. and more ethical workspaces. So we're all about specific actionable, feed, actionable feedback in our training. So what are a couple of things, what is one thing that, that our viewers can go do today to really step into a more authentic uh, leadership profile? If I had to choose one single thing and nothing else, I would say, choose all the hard conversations. Yes. And when I say that, I don't mean just have them both publicly, externally from a PR perspective, mm -hmm. as well as internally for leadership but honestly, which is a lot different. I think sometimes people have a hard conversation, but they don't tell the truth. Right. They, they sort of couch it in this way that's sort of not direct and straight. Backing into it, right. Backing into yeah. it. And 
I think that you have to have a lot of humanity and truth, but I think in the end, people really profoundly value that. I've had several clients, you have as well, um, coaching clients who, you know, they need to give someone really critical feedback and they're avoiding it and avoiding it and avoiding it. And what I will often say is these people have never had this feedback. And so they don't have a shot of developing. And it is your professional responsibility to steward this person to the next level in their career. And when you aren't having those critical conversations, what you're really doing is robbing someone of their highest and greatest self and potential. We are linking in this video um, to Anne Marie's piece on LinkedIn, um, which is also up on our blog about authentic leadership. And I invite you all to read that, to follow us on social media, um, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, um, and to follow this channel. So if you like what you're seeing, if, you, if this speaks to you, give us a like, give it a give us a comment, follow us so you know when we post these videos, um, we create this content in direct response to what our viewers and um, our fans want. So we invite you to, to be honest with us and let you know what that is, what you need more of, and join us on our mission to humanizing business. And thank you, Anne-Marie, as always. Always a pleasure. Thank you, friend. Have a, have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.